Hello again. In this lecture, we take a look at more functions. So we'll start off with some basic functions, and we'll discuss how we can build more functions from there. So the first is the square root function, f x equals root of x. The domain and range is here. The domain is all the non-negative numbers, x bigger than equal to zero, and the range is also similar. The range is all the non-negative numbers. And you can see the graph of the function here. And this is something that I'm sure you know. The log function here, I need this in uh, bold here. So the function actually is fx equals log x. Now the log here is to any base at all. And I require x to be bigger than zero. And the range here is the whole real axis, as you can see. Log of zero is undefined. And so this line here is one that the graph gets close to but never actually touches. And we call this a vertical asymptote. As x becomes close to zero this way, this line becomes further and further down this way. The curve here goes to in, towards infinity, but never actually check, touches the, the y-axis. So the y-axis here is a vertical asymptote. So an asymptote is a line that the graph approaches, but does not intersect. Exponential function, 2 to the x, for example, it can be any base at all here. The domain here is all of the reals, and the range here is, again, all of the reals, except they mean they be bigger than 0. So the power 2 to the x can't be uh, negative. Now, this isn't a very good graph, unfortunately. Let me draw a better graph than that one here. The way the graph looks like here is... There's my x, and there's my y-axis. It goes that way. When x is equal to 0, that point is equal to 1. And as you can see, as x becomes bigger and bigger, as x goes this way, this graph here gets closer towards the x-axis. And so here, the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. In other words, y equals 0 you know, is a horizontal asymptote. The graph approaches it, but never actually touches it. The hyperbola, x times y equals 1, or I can write the thing as y equals 1 over x. Now, x can't be 0, and of course, clearly, neither can y be 0. The domain here is all the reals except x equals 0, so x not, not, not equal to 0. And the range is all the reals except y can't be 0. Now, in this case, you can see, as because the, neither of the x's is in the domain or ranges here. So as x goes towards infinity here, you can see the graph gets closer to the, the line, the x-axis, but never touches it. And here, as x goes to 0, similarly here, the graph gets closer to the y-axis, but never touches it. Likewise, in this side here as well, as x goes to negative infinity, again, the graph touches the closest, gets closer to the x-axis, but never touches it. And likewise here, when x goes towards 0, the graph goes down and goes towards the y-axis, but never touches it. So the y-axis, which is x equals 0, is a vertical asymptote, and the x-axis, which is y equals 0, is a horizontal asymptote. Cubic function here. So this is just y equals x cubed. The domain is all the reals, and the range is all the reals here as well. That should be an arrow there, that's my typing. And the graph is odd symmetry because negative x cubed is negative over x cubed. In other words, what I'm saying is the graph looks like this. Two arms to it. You take a look at negative one cubed. That's negative one. That's the same as negative of one cubed. That's what we mean here by this expression. So a value here, 1, gives you a value here, which is 1. And a value here, negative 1, gives you a value here that's negative 1. So if I draw the line y plus negative x, you'll find the graph actually is symmetric around that. It's a reflection of the, this half onto the other half here. So this graph has odd symmetry. The absolute value function written as fx equals x here with two lines around it. That means essentially that it's... It's the same as x when x is bigger than equal to 0, but it's negative x when x is less than 0. So the graph here actually looks like this.
over here is just equal to x and over here is negative x so you can see what happens is for the value 1 the mod on the absolute value is 1 but for negative 1 also the absolute value is 1 another way of defining the function is to say fx is this x squared square root of but this is a positive square root so if you look at it negative 1 squared square root of becomes the square root of 1 which is 1 so it transforms or takes the negative numbers to positive numbers and keeps the positive as positive and zero stays where it is this graph is even symmetric you can see that the graph is symmetric around the y-axis so some examples here so it says state the domain and range and sketch the graphs of the following functions so fx equals 1 minus x the first thing is for the domain, I require to make sure that the thing in the square root is non-negative. So 1 minus x must be bigger than or equal to 0. And that gives me 1 is bigger than or equal to x. Or, if I like, x is less than or equal to 1. So you can see what's going on here. And the range here, for as long as the thing in the square root behaves itself, the range will be y bigger than or equal to 0. So if I write this formally here, I'm going to write domain equals all those x's in R such that x is less than or equal to 1. And the range here is y in R such that y is bigger than or equal to 0. And the graph of this is very interesting. I need to be less than or equal to 1 here. And so it's exactly the same as the square root graph looking like this. When x is equal to 0, we can see I'm going to have y equals 1. That's 1. The way it works, of course, is this. If I can just scribble for a little while here. I take a look at the graph of the square root. Then if I look at the square root of negative x, that means I must be on this side because it's essentially a reflection in the y-axis. So negative values here, if I take the, the negative become positive, and I get and that square root is looking like that. When I add 1 to it, essentially 1 minus x means I'm going to shift it. So this thing here is going to be 0 when x is equal to 1. So it shifts it to the point 1 now. So it's a translation that way, and I can build the graph that way. And that's the graph that I want of. 1 minus x square root of. So that's some ideas of how you can build graphs from simple functions. Take a look at log of 1 take x here. So the first thing is, for to take the log here, I must have that the thing I'm taking the log of must be bigger than 0. That means I must have 1 minus x bigger than or equal to 0. And essentially that means 1 is bigger than or equal to x, or x is less than or equal to 1. Same idea as before. Actually, excuse me. 1 is strictly bigger than 0, strictly here. So x is less than 1. And the range of the log function is going to be still the same as before. It's all the y's that are real, but it must be, yeah, same as before. So the graph of this, well, I know x can't be bigger than 1. So 1 here is an isomptote. I can't exceed, I can't go beyond 1. And when x is equal to 0, this is log of 1, and log of 1 is 0. So x is equal to 0, log of 1 is 0. The graph looks like this. This one is a vertical asymptote. When x is 0, I'm over there. 
negative y is 0. I have log of 1 take x is 0. Now I know that log of 1 is 0. That means x is equal to 0. So the graph I was drawn in there isn't quite right. So what I need here is I was saying I did say the right thing, but I do the wrong thing. Let me just start again with this one. What I said was that when x is equal to 0, y is log 1 and log 1 is 0, so log of 1 take x, when x is 0, this is log of 1, log of 1 is 0, so that means that the graph actually goes to the origin, 0, here. Then equally if y is 0, that means log of 1 take x is 0, so x must be 0, so here I'm having the graph actually go through this, and that asymptote still stays, so the graph is actually looking like this. And even here we can draw the graph or use the same ideas as before translation. So if I look at log of x, it looks like that. Log of negative x will look like this, so it's just reflected. And if I then look at what I have, 1 minus x, so the, the this point here that I have shifts 1 to the right, so the origin shifts 1 to the right. So the whole graph shifts 1 to the right. And I end up with a graph that I actually drew earlier over here. So everything shifts across. This point here is 1, so that it goes to 0, and the whole graph begins to look like what I had over there. So it's a usual log graph, not a very good graph over here. So again, if I find the domain and ranges correctly, and I take a look at the shape of the graph, I know from the basic ideas that log x will have that kind of shape. And all this happening is I'm moving it around from here. Another example, log uh, fx equals 1 minus x here. So clearly here x can't be equal to 1. So the domain here is going to be x which are reals, but x is not equal to 1. And the range here, again you can see the same idea as before, this is dividing by a number, and I can never get 0 from there. So y is a real, but y is not equal to 0. So the graph of this, what's happening is, you can see here now that x equals 1 is a vertical asymptote. And when x is 0, y is equal to 1. So over here, y is equal to 1. So you'll see, if x is bigger than 1, this whole thing is positive. So it looks like this. I have a little bit translated. Um, um, when x is, uh, I've got this uh, the wrong way around, excuse me. When x is positive, this whole thing is negative. So it's going to be the bottom here. And when x, is, when x is negative, this thing is positive. And as I was saying earlier, the graph actually goes through when x is 0, it goes through 1. So there is where the graph looks like. There's the x-axis and the y-axis. And again, all that's happened is, if I take a look at the graph of y equals 1 over x, or if you like, x, y equals 1, then that graph looks like this. Now, because I have a negative here, I've got a negative x here, the negative actually flips everything around. So the graph actually changes size this way. It's now going to be here and there. And what I've got is x1 minus x times y. So the origin, these things are 0 at 
when x is equal to 1 and y is 0. So whole graph now shifts to this point where the origin now is the point 1, 0. So two things have happened. The origin has shifted to 1, 0 and the graph has turned around the x and y axis, essentially reflection, reflection around the x axis because I've got I've taken the negative of it. So that's the graph of that one. 2 to the minus x. Well here the domain is going to be the whole reals because I can find 2 to the minus x for all real numbers. The range again because this is a power the powers can't be bigger, less than zero. So here the range is y in r except y must be bigger than zero. So again, we have got the x axis x is, x is an asymptote. So actually, two to the positive x looks like this. And because I've got 2 to the negative x, it's a reflection in the y axis as before, so it looks like this. And it still goes to the same point 1 here. These ones are tricky if you are careful. The same idea here. So this again. I can find for any values of x, so the domain is all the reals. But the range here, of course, is an absolute value, y can't be negative, so the range is y bigger than or equal to zero. And so what's happening here is now the vertex here, when this is 0, x is equal to 1. And this is, when if I put x equal to 0, I get negative 1 absolute value, which is 1. So actually, it looks like this. This point is 1, and that point is 1 here. So the graph has shifted. The origin has shifted. We know actually the graph of absolute value of x is going to be over here like this. And all that's happened is now this zero has shifted to x equals one. This is a bit more tricky. Let's have a look at how this works out. The points where these things are zero is what I'm interested in. So it's zero at zero and also zero at one. So beyond if as long as I am bigger than one, both of things these things are positive. So for x bigger than one, this is positive. So I get x minus 1 plus x between 0 and 1. This becomes now negative. This is positive. So this is negative x minus 1 plus x. And here they're both negative. So it's negative x minus 1 minus x. In other words, what I'm saying is if I break this up, oops. into this sense, what I get is fx is, this is negative x plus 1 minus x is minus 2x plus 1 for x less than 0. And here the negative x and the plus x cancel off and I just get 1 for 0 less than equal to x less than I can change this one and put it closer to the axis. Less than 1. And over here is 2x minus 1 for x bigger than equal to 1. So what I'm going to do is draw this graph in this sense. It's for x less than 0 is minus 2x plus 1. So when x is 0, y is equal to 1. And so it will go that way. And if I was to extend this down, when y is 0, that will give me x is equal to a half. In between here and 1, this is flat. 
and after this 2x minus 1 so it will go up again this way so if I extend this down this is 0 when x is equal to half so it comes back to this point there and if I extend this further down this will cost the x the y axis at negative 1 so this is tricky you'll find some of these tricky ones in the uh, problem sheets but you have to build this up step by step and they can be very tricky these ones here well the first one is good is x squared minus 2 x minus 1 so if the thing is x minus 1 squared minus 2 you can check that this is the right completion of square so I know here the domain is all the reals And the range is, if you look at the value of the function as it stands here, the square term is always bigger than equal to zero. The smaller second matrix is zero. If that's the case, this is negative two. So that means y must be bigger than equal to negative two. And the graph is easy in one sense, because I start with x. X minus one means I go to the right because the zero is not one, and I take two off. From there and bring it down here so you can see when x is equal to 0 y is equal to negative 1 and the minimum value is negative 2 so it will do something like this and there's the graph you can find the intercept if you, if you like here for the x and for the x-intercepts here, we now want to solve the equation x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. This can't be factorized, but you can use the quadratic formula here to get the solution, and I'll leave that for you to try. Here's another one. This is a little easier, actually, in one sense. The same ideas. You'll find the domain here is, again, of course, all the reals. All the values for x. I can calculate this for, but likewise the range here is going to be because the square, the smallest the square, square can be 0, this means the smallest value the function can take is 2. So the range is all of the y's in R such that y is bigger than or equal to 2. So essentially this point here now shifts, this is 0 when x is equal to negative 1, so I'm over here somewhere and there the value of the function is 2, so it looks like that. If I do put x equals 0 in here, I get 3 for the value. The x is, y axis intercept is 3. So those are the graphs of, the, of those things. In the problem sheets, you'll get more practice with this, and there are some tricky ones and some simple ones. Until next time, goodbye.